Hey friends out there in YouTube land, Robert Ham here with Robert Ham Photography Today. I'm going to continue a conversation with you guys that I've been having with Dabba Do over on Instagram. And I want to remind you, if you're following me here on YouTube, great, but you're only getting half the story. Go check me out at Rob Ham Photo on Instagram. You can find out all the cool stuff that we've been talking about and what I've been sharing with the TL70. Today is actually about light. Uh, Dabadoo got the TL70 in the lens kit and even has a cool case that he's getting made up for it. How, how neat is that? And he's having some issues that uh, about lighting. So he's asking me questions about lighting. And I think that what it comes down to is we all need a little refresher, including myself, on metering for cameras. Like, how does it work? And once you understand that, once I understood how this camera was metering, man, my pictures got better immediately because I had a better idea of what the camera was going to do. So, let's sit under the tree together and talk about this, you and I. Why not? So, let's first of all talk about light. And I picked this tree not because it's comfortable, because trust me, it's not. <laughs> I picked it because you can very clearly see that light is falling on me because I'm casting a shadow. You see, and that's important. That light right there from the sun, which is the light source, is actually falling on me. And that light that's hitting me is called incident light because it is coming from one direction falling onto a subject. It's not bouncing off the subject. That's a different thing. So, if we were to meter, we've got two ways that we can meter mechanically with for a camera, for a light system. I guess three ways if you include your eyeballs, right? Organically. If we were to meter, one of the ways we would do it might be the way back in the day where a photographer would do it for you. Do you remember going to JC Penney's or better yet, a photographer's office and actually sitting down for family portraits and they'd walk up to you with this doohickey this device that had a golf ball sticking on the end of it and they put it up to your face and you might think what are you doing and they'd push a button all the lights in the, the studio would go off and the next thing you know the photographer would look and say hmm f56 at 60 very good well that little dome was actually a very very scientific device that was metering and reading light that was hitting the subject notice he would face the dome outwards towards the bright strobes because that dome was metering the light that came from the flash when he pushed the button for it to meter. And it would tell him something very important about the light. It would tell him how hot, how bright the light was. And those numbers he would come away with was something that would help him figure out whether or not the exposure was what he wanted. Of course, the dome would tell him how to make a correct exposure at 18% gray. But here we go. We have that dome, that incident light meter, telling us what would make 18% gray on our subject which is great one of the best parts about incident light reading is the fact that you get very consistent very good results because you're measuring the light that's actually hitting your subject let me ask you a quick question I'm being serious here I want you to help me figure this one out <laughs> do you see a little golf ball on this I don't see anything that looks like a little dome or an incident light meter in fact let's look at your cell phone you probably are looking at it right now do you have a little golf ball attached to it no probably not and here's why. You don't have one because it uses a different kind of metering system, right? And that's very, very important. The next thing that we need to consider is that another way to meter would be from refla refraction, right? Refraction, very important. And what is refraction? It's kind of like reflection. <laughs> I'm spoonerism all over here. It's kind of like reflection, but it's measuring the light that's bouncing off your subject. So now let's think about that. When you pick up your cell phone and you go take a picture of the family pup, let me ask you a quick question. Do you think it's measuring the light that's hitting your subject or the light that's bouncing off of your subject into the lens of the camera and onto the sensor? Well, if it wasn't choice two, <laughs> go back to high school physics, okay? Because it's measuring the refracted light. In fact, let's just make sure that we all realize we don't really even see the colors of objects. And that's a very important thing about refracted light. See, refraction is light that is not absorbed by an object, right? Oh, wow, this is getting crazy. It's not that the apple's red. It's that the apple skin is absorbing all the colors of the light spectrum except red, which is what we're seeing through refraction. Woo, bl mind blown. The minute I tell you that your camera sensor doesn't actually see color and it sees in black and white, uh, you could hang up now, right? But that's a story for another day. So now we understand two very important things, and it took about five minutes to get there. Thank you for the journey. We can now continue. Summarize those two things. Incident light meter, meter is light that's hitting the subject directly. It's not affected by hue or color because it's measuring the actual value of the light that's hitting something. Refractive metering 
is measuring light that's bouncing off of something and it is affected by hue and color because as we heard in the apple example the only light that comes bouncing off that apple is red light unless you have a green apple or a fuji apple and all of those are tasty apples so i'm okay with any one of them continuing on what kind of meter do you have here well we know that we don't have a spot meter it's not like your cell phone you don't get to push a button on here and have it choose an exposure that matches the spot that you touched and just so that you know, and this is not a spot meter at all because there's no way for the meter to determine what spot you're looking at. That's because the meter's outside of the lens and it doesn't have anything over that to help it. The small meter that you see right here is what's called a full matrix meter. It's a refractive index meter and it meters the whole scene. So, what is it doing? Well, it's trying to turn the shadows into an 18% composite gray which means it's trying to expose for the shadows. All light meters try to expose for shadows. The difference is when you expose a total scene in matrix metering for the shadow, you have a but much higher probability of blowing out highlights and losing detail. Now, since we know that, how can we use it to help us? The first suggestion is download an app by David Quaylu over on Android and iOS called Light Meter. There's a paid version and a free version. Doing so and using the uh, refractive mode, the R mode, will help you measure and determine what kind of light situation you're looking at. Remember, Fujifilm Instax Mini Film is a very light sensitive film, eight times more sensitive to light than the film I would use out in the bright day at ISO 100. The Instax Mini Film is ISO 800. That's really, really sensitive. So you have to set the light meter to tell us that, but once we do, we'll also have to remember that Fujifilm Instax Mini Film, in my experience, has about a 10 exposure value range. Guys, the scene that you're seeing out here is roughly 15. That means you're going to crush some detail on either side of the metering. So what can we do? We can use the Light Meter app in order to tell us how bright the scene is. If we find a scene that's around 13, 14, we know that we're in an okay position. We're going to lose a little bit of uh, detail in either the highlights or the shadows, but it gives us the ability to make a choice. And then we can do something else. It can tell us what aperture sh we should use. So if you want to use f5.6, it should say that the camera might use at something like 1 5,000th or 1 4,000th of a second in this lighting. Well, this camera can't do it, so guess what? Doesn't matter if you put an ND filter on here, don't choose f5.6. Now, when you choose something like f8 or f16 with a two-stop ND filter, it's gonna tell us that in this light, and it's getting brighter right now, that it's gonna be closer to 1 500th of a second. You might need an ND8, uh, which is a three-stop ND filter, so that'll be closer to uh, 1 uh, 250th of a second, and then you can make that choice. You can also use your exposure controls in order to make the shutter go one complete stop brighter or one complete stop darker. Mint Camera gives us that ability with the EV control slider that's right there. So using those tips, thinking about light, realizing that we're metering, realizing that the, the meter on the camera is not reading the spot on the face that you think, it's actually reading the entire scene, is going to help you make better choices when using this camera. Don't forget, getting that light meter is going to help you right a bit. But once you get a couple hundred clicks underneath your belt, and it gets better immediately with the light meter, once you start getting pictures that come out beautifully with this, and you start being able to show off that beautiful depth of field, and your fat camera ninja skills go crazy, and you're tagging at Mint Camera and hashtag make ordinary days extraordinary, and people are liking your pictures a thousand times, guess what? It makes you really excited. And all you had to do was watch one 10 minute video, download a free app, and get out there and have some fun. Guys, I hope this has been helpful. I hope we have Dab Do and I have been able to help you with our conversation that I decided to share with you over here on YouTube. I'm Robert Ham with Robert Ham Photography. Don't forget if you're watching here only, you're only getting half this story, go follow me on Instagram at Rob Ham Photo. Don't forget to follow the good people over at Mint, who by the way are sending me out some ND filters to test for you. You can find them at Mint Camera. I want to thank you for watching. I want to remind you that I will catch you on the flip side.